Hey everyone, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This is the show all about farmer's markets. Whether you're a farmer's market manager, a farmer, or a food producer selling at farmer's markets, or just a curious farmer's market shopper, this is the podcast for you. On today's episode, we are discussing weather at your farmer's market. We received a great email from one of our listeners about some serious wind at a recent market of hers. We'll be giving you some tips about how to handle weather issues at your market before, during, and after they happen, and whether or not to stay open. Pun intended. (laughs) I'm Bridget Myers, one of your hosts. I am a longtime on-site farmer's market manager, and I've done it all from pulling permits to dealing with weather at markets. That's right. (laughs) And I'm Kat Fields-White, still an active farmer's market manager, founder of San Diego Markets and of Intense Farmer's Market Business. And we've all dealt with that weather issue. And in fact, out here, we're pretty lucky in San Diego. It, we have issues once in a while, but mostly we've got pretty stable weather. And honestly, when I think about weather issues, I probably don't think about summer so much. So it was a little surprising to get this email from Carol. You know, I think more about if we're going to get rain and we have to think about closing a market, it's for us, it's definitely going to be in the winter. And I think people deal with snow and that kind of thing. So we forget that especially in certain parts of the country, weather can be an issue in the summer. Absolutely. We always look forward to summer because it's so bright and sunshiny and an easy breeze blows through the market in San Diego, California. But yeah, definitely around the, around the country, there's different kinds of weather happening at different times of the year. Yeah. We've mm-hmm. got friends and family in the southeast, and I know tornadoes are scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can pop up really suddenly, and, and oftentimes it's in July, August, that kind of period. Um the, our listener that wrote us, and it was really fun to hear from her because she said, we love your podcast as her opening, so we <laughs> liked that. But uh, Carol Rehack from the South Milwaukee Downtown Market, and that's in the actual town of South Milwaukee. It's not just a little piece of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> it's South Milwaukee. I think Carol wanted to make sure we mentioned that. But she said, uh, our afternoon market recently suffered straight line winds, and it was pandemonium. They were trying to get their 40 vendors packed up and out of the market. She says 10 vendors had their tents destroyed, and they have a 25-pound per leg weight limit, which is pretty standard. So um, she said it was bad. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but the fire chief got involved. They're pressuring them to have a, a consistent storm closure policy, and she was wondering if we had any suggestions. So I had to go look up and see what straight line winds are. We're not familiar with that term here. Yeah, I never and heard it of turns it. out it's a little bit similar to a tornado in terms of um, intensity. Yeah, powerful So wind. really scary. Yeah. But instead of a, the spiral that you think of with the term- tornado, or as Carol mentioned in her follow-up letter, that feeling that you're at the Wind- Wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> and DM, Uncle Henry, it's a twista. <laughs> it's a little bit different than that. It's coming in, pretty much as it sounds, a straight line from one direction, really, really heavy. Uh, I asked her, you know, is this like a tornado? It's something that you... Presumably don't deal with every day. You know, this is a disaster, so how do you prepare for disasters? And she said they do happen a few times a year, and with what all of us are experiencing, I think, in terms of climate change and things, uh, the last couple of seasons have been, as Carol says, a doozy. (laughs) So they've seen more weather issues, and they need to figure out how to handle that on a consistent basis. So it comes right back to the whole are you a rain or shine market, and as we all know, Rain's an issue, but what's really scary at markets is wind. Absolutely. I always say wind is my least favorite weather to have at the market because if it's a really hot and sunny day or it's a rainy day, you can hide under your tent from those kind of things. You can stand in your tent and kind of get through it. Wind can come right in your tent. (laughs) Right Right in in your tent. Can take your tent with it. (laughs) Carry your tent along. I mean, that's the really scary thing. Yeah, definitely. So so we all strive to be rain or shine. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to the wind in a second. Yeah. Uh, And to always be open. And, you know, there's all kinds of good reasons for that. You've got to build shopper trust. Yeah. We have really busy rainy days here at our markets because we've convinced the shoppers by convincing the farmers and vendors that you have to be open rain or shine. Absolutely. So the, the... Shoppers count on you. Mm -hmm. Uh, When the crops have come out of the ground and the bread's come out of the oven, those things are going bad right then. So if you don't open because the weather's a little iffy or you think it might be, that's really hard on your farmers and vendors too. So we think being open, if at all possible, is really important. But wind can get dangerous. Absolutely. So different climates, different markets, you've got to make different decisions sometimes. Yeah, and it's all about being a market manager is weighing those two 
kind of things that are going on at the same time when weather is predicted a certain way. You have a lot of food waste that's going to happen if you're going to close a market from the farms and, and the food vendors, lost income for people, right? and lost uh, shopping habits for some people. I know a lot of our shoppers are there regularly. It's not like they want to go to the grocery store if we're closed. It doesn't offer the same quality of food at the grocery store. They're right. not going to be able to get their groceries. They're not just coming to the market for a loaf of bread, and if we're closed, they'll go to the store. It's They need that bread. That they bread. need that that, you know, less preservatives. They need all the natural meat. They need the locally grown produce. That's what they're used to, and that's where their quality standards are. So it's important to take that seriously and to really uh, build that trust with your shoppers, for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So so it's a delicate balance between fulfilling those shoppers' needs, the needs of your farmers and vendors, and also keeping everybody safe. Absolutely. I mean, when it comes down to it, that's got to be a big priority, too. Yeah. Predicting is so hard. Definitely. You know, as Bridget knows, uh, we've only been closed, I think, maybe three times in 12 years of doing this. Uh, and and one of the reasons we don't close much is because one of those closures, I closed a market based on a prediction on a weather site. Yep. Uh, it did, in fact, rain very early in the morning. The market didn't open till 2. By then, it was bright and sunny, lovely and dry. We'd already told all the farmers and vendors we were off. We had angry mobs of shoppers. <laughs> they were so mad because it was a beautiful day, and they were ready to shop for their groceries, and we had closed the market. For what appeared to be no good reason at all. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the, weather, yeah. the weather forecasters... We just got really excited about nothing at all, which is typically what happens, I think. That is what's happening yeah. nowadays. Carol mentions that, too, that all of her volunteers and team at the market were, turned out to be using the same weather app, which turned out to be horribly unreliable. Yeah. You know that app on your phone that just comes with your phone? That tells you nothing. Yeah. You know, it'll say rain. It doesn't specify what time it's going to rain or are you talking about all day rain? Are you talking about a drizzle? Absolutely. Uh, and ours and is by... It's usually like a city uh, forecast, so it's like San Diego. Well, like a lot of other cities in all over, it's really, we have microclimates here. So we have beach weather. We have inland weather. We have, you know, canyons that run through our city. So it's if you're close to a canyon, maybe the weather is different than if you're in downtown or by the bay and things like that. And that happens all over the place. So how can you tell where the weather is going to be like? Right. So those those really general weather apps that are just by cities, uh, ignore those entirely. Mm -hmm. Uh, I used to follow Weather Underground pretty religiously, and it used to be a good weather app. And I don't want to get sued or anything. I'm I'm sure they're still good for many purposes, but for markets... Uh, I don't find them as reliable as they used to be. Mm -hmm. I think that, unfortunately, the weather sites are subject to the same competitive thing that the news sites are. And so they get a lot more clicks if they run headlines that say, Storm of the Century, Mm -hmm. which scares away shoppers, makes your farmers and vendors nervous. These are people's livelihoods we're affecting when we close a market, plus yeah. people's eating habits. Yeah. So it's I find it really irresponsible for them to be so sensationalist about weather. But yeah. unfortunately, that is the nature of news nowadays. Uh, it's, yeah. So that's frustrating. And with too. social media, they want to be the one that says the storm is coming first right. and get shared get around. Scoop. Yeah, get the scoop on it. But really, it affects so many people. Yeah. Yeah, it's really All frustrating. kinds of outside events. Very frustrating. Mm-hmm. So weather.gov, if you really drill down in there and get down to your zip code, I think you can get some good information there. It's typically um, where I go. Mm-hmm. NOAA is kind of the gold standard, but it's not as easy to find. You know, it's not just an easy app. Carol actually mentioned that they thought about getting an NOAA radio. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sort of like a ham radio. It tunes in right to the, the weather forecast. But then, as she mentions, that's one more thing to haul around, to find a place to store. It's yeah. not an inexpensive investment. So you got to think about that. She had some clever ideas, too, that we'll talk about on another podcast about uh, getting some other folks involved, maybe ham radio operators or your local police and fire. In a city our size, that would be tough. I mean, we're just frankly not the police department's highest priority. Yeah. But uh, in South Milwaukee and a lot of towns that have farmers markets, that could be, you know, it could be that your local officials, your local government agencies could be helpful there. Yeah, absolutely. So I I guess what you have to look at is once you make the decision whether you're going to open or close, and the other two times I think that we've closed, we have been opened and then closed an hour into the market because of wind. Yeah, it was windy. I do remember the one in at our Pacific Beach market here in San Diego, California. It was right by the beach. We couldn't get a good reading on what the weather would be like. It was kind of sprinkling as we set up, and we saw some kind of dark clouds moving in, but sometimes those blow right away. So we didn't know 
Most of the vendors and farmers, I'd say a couple, maybe two called out for the day, but everyone was there set up, yeah. setting up, and it was raining, but there were shopper, shoppers out there, and then the wind came, and I remember it oh, blew over so a big sad, farmer's yeah. table and a, full With of oranges. oranges. That's right. And the oranges ran down the middle of the street, like a river of oranges rolling down the street. We were all picking them up for the farmer and putting them back in his crate, and then that's when we kind of decided, okay, this is probably just not a safe situation anymore. We've been open for a couple hours. People have been able to come out and shop, and it's really time to pack it up and our vendors were very responsible it was a really great safe pack up and move out everyone helped each other and we all of course we all got wet but there wasn't any breakage of tents or anything like that because we saw that wind coming and i think we called it in time well i think one tent fell yeah it didn't break yeah uh and luckily and it's hard because it's such a hard decision do you want to close and disappoint the shoppers but i think we called it just in time, if we'd waited another half hour, we could have really had a mess on our hands. Exactly. And so that's the trick, is trying to figure out what to do. I remember that day, actually, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was one of our meat ranchers. Mm-hmm. He was on his phone, so smart, texting all his customers saying, weather looks a little sketchy. It's possible they're going to call the market. Get down here and get your stuff before we go. And he had a really, really good sales day in the hour and a half, two hours that we were open. Yeah, he did tell us. It was Scott from Dale Ranch, who is um, one of our local ranchers here who has come to the conference before. They're really great. Uh, friends of ours. And yeah, he did. He has all of his customers on a text chain, which we've talked about in other podcasts. And we will in the future, of course, connecting with your customers. And he said, hey, the weather's coming in. I know you still want to get your meat. Just if you're going to come at five o'clock, we might be closed. Get here at three and pick it up for me. And he said he made the same amount of sales in that hour and a half or two hours that he did typically on a full four and a half hour market day because he let his customers know and because they needed those Groceries, like I said, they can't just go to the grocery store and get that same quality of meat that he sells. Exactly. Absolutely not. eggs. Yeah, Yeah. eggs, anything. So they came down and got that. So, I mean, that's a really good thing to remind your vendors and farmers. Hey, if the inclement weather is coming our way and we're still open, connect with your customers and say, come early today. Yeah. Get here early. Let them know. Mm -hmm. So once you make that call... Uh, one of Carol's other questions is, how do you get 40 or 50 vendors off a site quickly? Yes. And it sounds like with the straight line winds thing, it's even more intense than what we're talking about. It comes on very quickly. Yeah. you got to move. you got to move a lot of people quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually going to do a whole podcast because this has been a big topic of discussion at the conferences I've been at lately and uh, in some chains that I do with market managers around the country about the importance of having an emergency plan. Yep. For all kinds of things. I, you know, we talked to a manager that had a gas leak near their market and had to get everybody out, and the vendors didn't want to leave their products or their cash boxes, obviously. Yeah, because but that's like, not a disaster you can really see, and yeah. so maybe they felt a little less urgent, but still important to vacate. <laughs> yeah, still important dangerous. to listen to the fire department and to move. So, yeah, having that plan in place is very important. Yeah, so all the things that you can do to kind of ward off the greater damage is, you know, is having a really clearly defined uh, recommendation and, and rule on tent weights, for instance, yep. which, which does help. And Carol said they ran into problems even with the folks that they have a 25 pound per leg policy and even then um, had some trouble. Although, as in every market, I'm sure they had a few people that were missing a weight that day or mm-hmm. it was in their car. How <laughs> often do we hear that? Yeah. Uh, she says, we saw one vendor being taken down the sidewalk holding onto their tent. Think hang glider. <laughs> it's oh, just no. not a good situation. So you want to keep reminding your vendors how important the tent weights are. We know it's a pain to haul them around. They're heavy, but they're important. They they can make the difference in whether you're safe or not safe. She's talking about tents blowing around like missiles in that situation. So Yeah, your uh, body cannot be your tent weight. <laughs> your body cannot be your tent weight. We have had folks use bags of oranges, but really in a heavy wind, that's not going to do it either. So 25 yeah. pounds uh, per leg is good. Mm-hmm. We have a really nice, clear advisory that um, we got from Jessica Douglas at Grow New York City, yep. who does the Union Square Green Market and a lot of other markets in New York. Uh, so 25 pounds per leg. And that means if you've got a farmer that's got four tents, that's not just 25 pounds per one leg of the tent. <laughs> yeah. you know, you've got to spread that out. So you're talking about a lot more weights. And then an emergency manual that explains to people what the priority is. Do you bring a vehicle in or do you just grab what's really necessary and get out of there? Yeah. Um, do you drop your tents? Because those are going to turn into weapons. Yeah, uh, and, fold them up But then quick. you maybe fold them up and leave them there if you need to, if the, mm-hmm. the situation calls for it. So having those things figured out in advance yeah. rather than when you're being blown down the street mm-hmm. is really, really helpful. Yeah, we had a vendor that we had a real rainy season, and she said, what I changed about 
me attending my attendance at markets is that I knew it might be inclement weather. I usually bring my, um, she had sauces and some packaged items. She usually brings them in like crates or open tubs. She got like a couple heavy duty, big black, uh, tubs with heavy duty lids on them. And she brought those so that if she needed to pack up quickly, she had a secure place to put her product that would keep it dry and safe that she could pack up a lot faster than putting it in crates and then maybe it's getting rained on, maybe the wind is blowing it around. So just adjusting the way you're setting up sure. at the market and the equipment that you're bringing for those days yeah, when exactly. the weather could go Making sure sideways. it's really heavy duty. Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe you change your display a little bit that day. So we, we obviously encourage really full, abundant tables because that's what sells best. Yeah. But, you know, maybe if you can see that it's a day where it could go either way, maybe your, your display is a artfully designed but maybe not quite as full so you don't have quite as much to pull if you need to... Need to move in a hurry. Yep. Our, our info booth always has lots of flyers on it because we're right. there with lots of information. And I know we had a flyer tornado happen when That's one right. windy day came in all of a sudden and all our flyers went down the street and our shoppers kind of picked them up for us. But it was like, okay, I think it's time to just put the flyers away put the flyers today. Away. Or, you know, at least rubber band them into bundles that exactly. you pull one out at a time on yeah. those kind of days. Just adjust. Yeah. Just it's, adjust. It's just tough. It's... Uh, what do we say? We're going to get matching tattoos that say our job is weird. There's a lot to think about as a farmer's market manager, and yeah. and this is just one of those things. So yeah. uh, we can't say – we obviously encourage rain or shine markets, uh, but we can't advise that you always open. Yeah. But certainly be thoughtful of all the issues, keep your eye on it, and have a plan in advance so that you're ready to move if you need to. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a really important to remember that before, during, and after piece – because you want to have a plan before that you explain to all your farmers and vendors, explain why you function as a, a rain or shine market, why you want to stay open even if the weather looks a little iffy, and and where your policy is with closing up or you know when you would make that call and how you would make that call. Right. You know, this is how I'm going to let you know if the market's closed. Things like that. Just let them know. Just give them the information. How to operate during a market that has you know not so great weather and afterward how to handle that damage or, you know, responding to customers who came out and were disappointed that you had closed up even though the weather was okay. So things like that, just having those plans in place, I think is important. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Carol, for bringing up this, uh, this topic, it's important in this time of year, July and August are going to be sketchy in the Midwest and in the Southeast, especially where you see these straight line winds, where you see tornado warnings. Uh, making those calls is going to be tough. So again, Carol, South Milwaukee Farmers Market, thank you for bringing this to our attention and increasing our knowledge of the topic. I didn't know what a straight line wind was until now. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and again, we always love hearing feedback from our Farmers Market Podcast listeners. So you can email us through the website if you ever have any questions or hey, Hey, can we just we can we talk about this or what are some tips or tricks for helping this at my market or or any kind of questions that you have while you're listening so That's right. yeah always connect with us we love it and carol's email was a hoot i think we have to have her on as a guest one day because so. she yes. sounds like she's a she funny gal like she's fun <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely we can get her out to the conference yeah for That'd sure mm-hmm. yeah so email us at connect at intenseconference.com Hey, thanks so much for listening along. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you're listening to this podcast, and let us know how we're doing. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast. That helps us and you so you don't miss the next one. And if you want more farmer's market tips, tricks, and information, you can subscribe to our weekly newsletter at IntenseBusiness.com and follow us on Instagram at IntenseBusiness. Remember, that's I-N-T-E-N-T-S Business. We are really excited to announce that super early bird tickets for Intense, the Farmer's Market Conference 2020, happening February 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in San Diego, California, are on sale right now. Go to thefarmersmarketconference.com and get yours today. We love all the emails, interacting on social media, and seeing you one-on-one at your markets or ours, but nothing beats getting in a big group of all of us together in one space for a few precious days discussing and resolving issues, learning new techniques, hearing each other's interesting stories, and of course enjoying the beautiful February weather in San Diego, California. So please join us there. Get your tickets right now. This podcast is produced by Intense Business, where passion meets profit. Today's episode was recorded by Adam Samaha and edited by Justine Marzoni Mead. Original music by David Mead. Special thanks to Carol and our San Diego Markets team.